Hello city. Hello world. Welcome to a new installation of the Gospel Jazz Connection. I'm D-Nice. And you know what? It's a lot going on this week. Those of you that's been watching television, the news, reading the newspaper, listening to your favorite radio show somewhere, there's been a lot of breaking news. But is it breaking news? Is this something new? There's nothing new under the sun. All the changes, it's a date in the names of the people that are in the news. So you know what? It's all about time to just kind of like pray for those that need healing and mending. And start listening to people around you. Because you don't know who's really hurting and why they're hurting why they're doing the things they're doing. We may not understand it, but there's something deep set in people that make them react in different ways. So don't just, like they say, throw the baby out with the bad water. Sometimes you just got to just dig a little deeper, whether it's your family, whether it's a relationship that you have. No matter what it is, try to just stop for a second and put the shoe on the other foot and say, what if it was me? And if we start doing that more often, we'll be more sensitive to the needs of those around us, to each other, and also to ourselves. But we have to be the trendsetters for those that we're leaving behind or those that are coming up behind us. And so I beg of you, watch your walk. Make sure that you have your house in order. Because how can you help somebody else if you're hurting? If you're weighed down with baggage, then how can you tell somebody how to release theirs? If there's no sunshine in your day, how can you peel back the curtains and say, look, smile. You've got to lead by example. And some of you old school brothers and sisters out there know what I'm talking about. These youngsters, these young folks today, they're not trying to listen to what you're saying. If they see you're doing opposite from what you're saying, they know better. But if you're living the life as an example, and they see that you're for real, they're going to listen to you. You may not know it, but in the fullness of time, you'll see the change in them. So, with that being said, I didn't come to put on a soapbox. He's here just trying to explain what we do each and every week on the Gospel Jazz Connection. We just take the time to just sit back and talk about some of the issues that are out there and give viable solutions because I have a panel that is well-schooled and they know, they've been there. We've got people that are above millennial age that are with us in the studio. So they've been through something. You can't talk about something unless you've been through something. And so this panel here is going to be a wealth of information today. And so once again, you're listening to the Gospel Jazz Connection. In the background, you're hearing at Chuck Man Jones talk about Chase the Clouds Away. And it's been raining out here and across the coast from the west coast to the east coast has been raining, snowing, this whole climate change. I'm telling you, the earth is just really just fighting back. We've done so much to our climate over the years. The ozone layer and everything else we call ourselves not knowing innocently. We don't know what we're affecting, how we're affecting the atmospheric movement, which in turn sits back and does what it does. And that results in our livestock, our animals, our wildlife, our trees, our forests, everything that we used to know and love and cherish is now feeling the blunt of this, what we call climate change, global warming, call it what you want to, but it's a reality. We're seeing earthquakes in diverse places. I mean, all the things that we have read about, those of us that know the truth, it's coming to pass. So if that doesn't give you a wake-up call, I don't know what we are, but today we're going to try to give you a wake-up call because we're talking about a subject today that's really near and dear to my heart. Being the father of a millennial, 
and uh, having a young grandson, I'm trying to figure out, and I know my panel is going to be coming on to help me with today's question. So I'm going to take this time to get a chance for let you now before we do this now I need for you to grab a piece of paper and a pencil or pen because they're going to be giving you some good information and also they're going to allow you to know how to catch up with them before the show's over too because they've got vast information and wealth of knowledge so do that and while you're doing that let's go meet the players all right this young lady has been around for a couple of years <laughs> And uh, in those couple of years she's been around, man, she's written best-selling books. She's a life coach. She's a mother. She's a wife. She's a grandmother. Wow, she does it all. She's a writer, ghost writer. She's, there's not too much she doesn't do as far as helping the community and people as a whole. Let's bring to the microphone the one the only Miss Linda Coleman Willis Linda thanks for coming up thank you D good evening good evening good evening so what's new with you today tell us a little bit something about yourself for those who are just joining us for the first time well I think you did a great introduction I am a professional speaker for a long time I do speaking coaching consulting writing and I work with small business owners and entrepreneurs to help them build a successful business and my website is www.businessdevelopmentforsuccess.com because I found working with uh, entrepreneurs and small business owners people say uh, that business owners fail in the first five years but what I found is most people give up they don't fail they wow. give up okay and because they don't get the right support or the help that they need so that's what I've been doing for the last about the last five or six years now but I've been out here a long time as you know I've been out here about 20 years so yeah. I've done a little bit of all of it but whatever I do it's to help people to improve their lives one way or the other I love it and you know I was thinking about that the other day you said you've been out here for 20 years I must have ran into you when you just for first just getting out here I actually, it's been longer than 20 yeah, years. That's what I, yeah, that's no, what No, okay, I got you. Yeah. <laughs> my, my last, well, I did go to work for the Obama campaign. Yes. That, yeah, that was in uh, 2010 to 2014. Mm -hmm. But but before that, my last job was Bank okay. of America. I was the community development liaison for all of Southern California. And I left Bank of America Oh my goodness! In 1992, right? Yeah, I got you. 1992, yeah. and so I've been out here actually since then. But I came out as a professional speaker, right, and writer. That's right. So that's where I started, and of course added all the other things as I've gone along. Right, which is yeah. good because I, I was remembering the show, uh, the Woman of Prominence television show we yes. did, and uh, when <laughs> we pitched it to Marla Gibbs, and Marla was was gracious enough to uh, take that on, and when she did she came and did our opening she round she rounds us she says you know what we need a, a new talk show like we need a hole in the head but i'm believing in this one here and so she gave us the name to use and uh, i don't know how many celebrities if ever anybody's done something like that mm -hmm. and so she would come back and say man this has got to be of god because her friends were called she said my friends are calling me and saying hey do you have a show out there they're using your name and your likeness and whatever and she says it's always been positive and everything that's been coming around we got vicky pipkin at the da's office you know mm -hmm. and at garcetti's office was all like our uh, publicist mm -hmm. and so she brought in a lot of great people um in the first year out thanks uh to linda and the crew, we got the Cable Ace Award for being the best new show of the year. Mm -hmm. And that's we got our first year out with Women of Prominence. And we've never stopped. And, and, from that and point. did a lot of good work in the yes, community yes, because we, it was Women of Prominence, Women of Promise. Right. And we had prominent women who right. were uh, helping uh, up and coming women. That's so great. that's where that promise came in. Yeah. Yeah. So it was a, it was a great concept. Oh, and I really was, enjoyed it. It's, it's, yeah. It was a great ride. Yeah. It's still riding. Yeah. So yeah. like I said, so we're going to tooling and so but that, that's what I'm saying. So Linda's been around with us for a while. <laughs> She's seen a lot of things with us, and so that's good to have somebody around that you can just trust and know where she's coming from. They know where you're coming from. She knows where it's coming from. So thank you, Linda. So we look forward to talking to you on our subject for the day. So let's reach over here for a minute and reach this other young man right here. And this young man, he's been out there. I'm not even gonna say how long he's been in there because when I listen to some of the music that he's written, and he's written some of the greatest 
songs that you hear uh, in Top 40 and, and jazz and all these other things when he's written the music and words for it. And you sit there and you sing into it and you, and, uh, you do your investigation, you find out that uh, this young man, you know, Troy Box Mason did this. He wrote the songs, he produced them. He did a lot of things out there in the industry behind the scenes and in front of the scenes. And uh, the guy, like I said, he's, he's, he's a knowledge wealth of knowledge in the music industry and now he's back and tooling himself into a new finally dropping something else new for us oh yeah yeah and so like yeah. i said before any of you out there that's uh bootlegging this stuff and out there not, you know trying to circumvent paying those the royalty fees we coming after you no. all right you know what i'm saying okay you can't hide no more okay <laughs> you give credit what credit's due so we appreciate you man and uh, i want you take some time uh, and uh, tell us a little about yourself young man well you know i don't like i'm I'm a humble kind of cat, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I tell people, go ahead and just Google me, man, you know. <laughs> <laughs> How humble is that? <laughs> but when you Google him, it's about 20 pages, you know what I'm saying? You're just like, oh, come on. I wanted, I wanted you to tell me about it. Well, you know. I mean, you, I've been professional uh, musician since the age of 16. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess what, a little over 30 something years in the business now? <laughs> yes, I'm lying, huh? <laughs> but anyway, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I mean, God's been good. Right, right. The main thing that I am, um, I am so just proud of, of, of myself and I thank God for uh, calling me. And uh, becoming a preacher. Mm -hmm. And see, that's my new thing right there. Mm -hmm. You know, it's my everything. Not just my new, but my you. everything. But uh, uh, I've been uh, preaching for a while. And um, I'm still, you know, a uh, student of the word. Right. I, I don't tell everybody, you know, I know everything. I got to go back. That's 66 books trying to remember. Yeah, and you can't remember it all. So you always have to study, you know, right. show yourself approved. That's true. But, um... As um, as just in life, I've had many lives, you mm -hmm. know, and um, uh, successful, mm -hmm. you know, and then some that was just out there. Right, I got you. You know, so I got, I say, I, I can say I have some wisdom. Right. You know, I got you. I don't want to say my age, but 50 nah. plus, but, uh, uh, you know, I got some wisdom. Yeah, but I, it's good because, uh, you know, wisdom sometimes is uh, um, exonified by uh, gray hair, and I don't see any gray hair on your head. Well, you know well, so, uh, uh, I ain't going to. Okay. <laughs> I ain't saying nothing. <laughs> You know, God's yeah. been good. He, I, that's a good. Yeah, a lot of people don't right, right. Uh, think I'm the age that I am, right. and I don't carry myself that way. Right. And also, that's that's a good thing. I, 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 it's a blessing because mm -hmm. I'm able to, you know, talk across the board mm -hmm. from uh, uh, babies. You know, they always come to me to, you know, as we're right. talking about the millennials, and then uh, my age and over. Right. So you know, I, I, I'm 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 a uh, as they say a leech for knowledge. Oh, that's that's a good thing though. Yeah. Yeah. If you're gonna be a leech for something, yeah, be for knowledge. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because everything yeah. else will fade away. Oh yeah. You can't take it with you. Yes. But that's a good thing. So uh, thanks for showing up, man. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, so you have got to meet the players for the day. Shout out to Kerry, the Kerry Sims. He's out there in the field getting ready for some projects he's doing for the weekend. He's a top photographer out there, too, and, and uh, as well as being a musician. So he's getting ready to do something uh, fantastic this weekend. So he's getting ready for it right now, even as we speak. So our prayers go out for you, Carrie, that you, uh, you know what I'm saying, enjoy this weather and it doesn't become snowy or raining wherever you're at and you're safe for this weekend. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's bring it to the topic that we decided to talk about this afternoon. It's really compelling to me to talk about this because I have a grandson that just runs me crazy. Every time he sees his mom, he needs to have the phone. Every time he sees me, he knows not to even ask me for no more. You know oh, Grandpa, can I have your phone? Can I have your phone? And he's stuck on getting into, you know what I'm saying, playing these little games with the little friends on the, on the things like that. And I'm like, you know, I bought him games and whatever, but he likes that phone. It's like, you know, whatever, dude. You know, uh, you, do, you start making phone calls and we got a problem. But, uh, you know, just stuck on social media as it is and then playing the games games now but it just progresses mm -hmm. so the conversation of the day is social media and digital media 
in today's world, on today's platform, streaming platform, social media platform, is it actually helping our young kids or is it hurting them? Is it a crutch? So that's the question we're posed out for today. And the social media, it can be blogging, it can be, uh, uh, you know what I'm saying, texting, it could be um, everything. It can even be uh, YouTube and all the other platforms that are mm -hmm. out there. So we're talking across the board all the mm -hmm. way. You know what I'm saying? And there's, uh, there's good in everything. But there's a lot of bad out there too. Because from my perspective, uh, bullying over the last few years has become prominent online. And there's been a lot of suicides that have, you know what I'm saying, become that final outcome from the bullying that all started with the ability to go on social media and be able to point fingers and say mm -hmm. discriminating things about people, young kids, without being seen, mm -hmm. without having a name on you to track it down. So that that is not cool, you know what I'm saying, in my book. But they wouldn't have that ability to do it on a national scale mm -hmm. had they not had the ability to be able to have, you know what I'm saying? It's a coward tool. way of doing it. Yeah, but I mean, they, but it's being done. Right, right, And it's right. successful because if you're trying to get somebody to hurt themselves or feel bad about themselves and you're using that tool, you know, then it does. You, mm -hmm. Your clean beating mm -hmm. job, does it make it right? No, mm -hmm. but it's the ability to do it. But on the other side of it, too, uh, social media allows you to take positive things and go worldwide overnight to YouTube and whatever else. So, I mean, it has a good flow, mm -hmm. but it also has a negative flow. Mm -hmm. So how do you see, on your perspectives, that it either helps or hurt in some of the examples that you know to kind of just kind of like personalize it for you. So, Linda, if we can, we'll just start ladies first and we'll just go to you and let's, let's run with it. Oh, okay. Um, I don't think it's it's the, the uh, social media itself. I think it's the use or the misuse mm -hmm. because what I see is that kids live there. Mm -hmm. You know, their their whole life is there. And I'm talking about little kids. You mm -hmm. see mothers with their babies in the shopping cart and they have a phone or some kind of instrument in their hand and they are consistently online. And it's the same thing at home. So I think that it can be very positive if they are able to interact, the interaction kinds of things that they can do, learning and creative kinds of things that they can do. But unfortunately, they're not being monitored a lot of times, and so it's one way. They're just looking at something that's going on. They're not learning. They're not participating. Uh, they're not growing as a result. They're mm -hmm. just engaged. And I think that's where the harm comes in, and I think it's because they're they're communication skills and their interaction with other people, their peers, their parents, their siblings. I think it's 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 horrible because of that. And also I don't think it's healthy for a kid to just sit and in front of an instrument and for hours. Mm -hmm. So I think that it needs to be monitored. It needs uh, parents need to decide what their kids, based on their age, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in my opinion, mm -hmm. what they're going to be looking at and what they're going to be doing consistently. And I had the same challenge, uh, D, when one of my grandchildren, it, it, from, from two to ten, mm -hmm. they all want the same thing. They come through the door, they want my phone or they want my iPad or they want my computer. Mm -hmm. And then if they can't have that, they'll go to the television. But that's their last choice is right. the television. They want, uh, they want one of those instruments and they want to be involved with it. For hours. <laughs> It's crazy. It's crazy. No, it's no, crazy. You're, you're right. You're right. And, and let me just tell you about something I saw that's even even crazier. Mm -hmm. So we have to look at the parents, and I think parents are going to have to say, I have to take some responsibility here. This just happened the other day. I was driving, and a mother was walking, and she was, I don't know if she was texting. She had her instrument out, and she was doing something, and she was pushing her baby with one hand, and she pushed the, the, the baby right in front of my car. Mm. The baby was in the stroller, mm -hmm. and she wasn't paying attention. Mm -mm. And for the first time, I had to say something. I rolled down the window, and I said something, and she said something very nasty to me. She should wow. have been glad, because yeah. suppose I had been distracted. 
And lots of people are distracted behind the wheel. Mm -hmm. She pushed her baby in front of my car and was <coughs> upset with me. Mm -hmm. I mean, that that's just a step too far for me. No, it is. But that, that that's the world we live in. I mean, how many times, have, especially what I don't like is when you're driving during school hours and school lets out and you're coming to a light. And you see these kids still walking across the street and dragging their feet and looking at their cell phone or whatever. Now, they have might be in the wrong by crossing at the wrong time. But let me tell you something. Let you hit that kid. Mm -hmm. And even if they say it's not really your fault, it is because now you're psychologically messed up because now you have a uh, whatever they call that. Un, you know, and if it gets, it's, it's a it's not. Murder, but it could be manslaughter mm -hmm. and other things or jot down it charges. It on what you were doing when right. you ran over. Exactly. Them. If but you just, were texting or eating or right. distracted in some way. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. But see, you still get caught up. You just can't walk away unscathed from that. Right. So it mm -hmm. takes two. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. go, go, go ahead, Troy. Well, I agree with all of it. Mm hmm. Um, the thing that uh, you had just went through, I I, I go through every day because I drive a truck also. Wow. I drive 18-wheeler, and I see this on the freeway. Um, also, uh, I mean, I can be right behind them on the horn, and they will slow completely down. Actually, I can see in the car. Uh, the lady had her baby uh, in the car, and um, she slowed all the way down from... Uh, 55, 65 to almost 35, and I was coming up real fast behind her. And I'm, I'm, I'm carrying 80,000 pounds, mm -hmm. and it's very hard for a truck to stop, mm -hmm. you know. And this is on a freeway, so yes, I, I, that's a great point in what you're saying. Um, also, uh, the question um, about the media, um, it's bittersweet. Mm -hmm. Uh, the technology, I see what the uh, millennials, the children, everything they're doing with the technology. Mm -hmm. um, it's almost the same as, man, well, I won't say it's almost. I I'll finish this thought. This thought. Uh, I see what they're doing with the technology. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Okay. They're making money. They're, they're doing so many things with this technology mm -hmm. where uh, uh, us parents... Mm -hmm. Or, uh, 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 you know, our, our, our generation is kind of slow behind it. Mm -hmm. You know, some. Mm -hmm. I won't say all. But um, they're doing so much with it. Mm -hmm. Right? That's the good thing. And, and I, I like to talk to them, see what they're doing. Matter of fact, I'm learning. You know, also as me being professional uh, recording artist and, you know, an engineer, sound reinforcement, I do all that type of stuff, too, and been doing it for years. But now you don't cut, chop, you know, I mean, cut tape and you got to roll the tape back. Mm -hmm. You know, everything's done on a computer, but you still have to say have to have the same uh, schooling mm -hmm. to understand what are you what you're doing. And now. What I paid twenty, thirty thousand dollars for, mm -hmm. I can go to YouTube and get the same information. That's true. You know, so the the uh, technology is wonderful, but what they don't have is the wisdom, mm. and that's where we come in. Mm. But we have to be patient and figure out how to talk to them how to let them know you know mm -hmm. hey well it's the same thing but this is going to happen down the road mm -hmm. you know uh like you said uh i i, I call it a uh, it's it's a it's a time robber mm -hmm. you know the technology if you don't put uh, a, a, a lock on it It's a time grabber mm -hmm. uh, If you notice um, Even with parents mm -hmm. Everybody now It's a time robber um, It's The way the world is now You have to have social media To uh, uh, To promote yourself To get things out Um I, I was looking at TV and I ran across, you know, Jerry Springer came on. I said, what? Right. He's still mm -hmm. on? Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. And and it was at the end of the show. And then, you know, 
you know how Jerry is. He allow you to fight and do all. That. He promotes all that, but mm-hmm. then he talks about you afterwards if you really pay attention. Right, right. Um, with his thoughts of the day or whatever. Exactly. But what got me was he said, "Well, you can catch me on YouTube and you can catch me on Facebook." Right. So everybody has to have a YouTube, Facebook. Mm-hmm. So it kind of it grew. Mm-hmm. So it kind of it forces you to to have these things mm-hmm. to to function. You know, unless you just, you know, you got you, you out in the country, you got your own lake, your food and everything right, right, else. Right, and right. You, you, you know, you're good. Mm-hmm. But like I said, it's a bitter, sweet thing. Uh, I have four grandchildren. My oldest grandchild, he has his little iPod and all these different things. Mm-hmm. But when he comes to me, like doing Christmas and, and all that, but his mother... I I tip my hat off to my daughter-in-law. Mm. There's a time and a place for it when he gets out of hands. That thing gets taken. If he's too much, you know, he's he's too long on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, she takes it from him. Uh, give him a break mm-hmm. when he comes to me. You know, uh, you know, Papa. You know, can I have this and that and the other? I said no. Go outside and play. Mm-hmm. But see, everything that everyone said here is good. I still think. It's got to be the parents, Mm. you know, Uh, they got to have guidelines, just like Linda said, you know, you got to, you know, you you have to um, watch what your children's doing. You have to monitor it, you know, Uh, hey. You're on that TV too much. That's mm-hmm. what happened to us. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, I'm going to say, you know, I, I remember when it, it started being color TV. So, mm-hmm. you know, when the color TV came in, that's almost like what iPod. I was stuck mm-hmm. watching TV, mm-hmm. you know, but my mom said, hey, get out and go play. Right. Or as a matter of fact, you in here too long. Hey, I just signed you up for football. End up lo- loving it and went on. Right. You know, and that goes with a lot of other uh, children. We have to do that. But um, what what uh, do you do when when you go in a home and the dad's over there with his technology, mom's over there with her technology, Mm -hmm. and kids over there with their technology? No one's monitoring anyone. Everyone is into their own technology. Right. Mm -hmm. I I just came out of today. Right. I just came out of a situation. We had uh, got a a six bedroom house right up in Lancaster, Mm -hmm. and I'm not there anymore. But you know, the family came. You know, my stepdaughter, her husband, uh, the grand, you know, grandkids. And, you know, we the, we, we the old folks up in there. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I found out I'm more interacting with my grandkids. You know, uh, 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 stop saying, you know, but it, it, it just it blew my mind that I had to go. Yes. With my grandchildren and the parents are sitting there in the living room. And both of them on their yep. phone, <laughs> right? With the TV on. And I had to go in and I said, hey, did you know uh, such and such was in your room stealing, you know? Because uh, he had Rice Krispies. Mm-hmm. And they had them in their room, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, my grandson, yeah, yeah, I guess he'd be a mountain climber. He went, mm-hmm. he climbed mm-hmm. all the way up. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, I had, I would, we were in our room mm-hmm. down the hall, but I kept hearing something. Mm-hmm. And so I peeked out. I caught both of them running, you know, Mm. but their mom and dad was sitting there Mm. Mm. and the children are so smart. Mm. They knew when to 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 do their little covert operation to go get them Rice Krispies Mm. because they knew their mother and father wasn't paying attention. What happens when you have a two year old in a shopping cart too? Year old or younger mm-hmm. in a shopping cart mm-hmm. with an electronic device in their hand mm-hmm. while the mother is shopping. That mother had to put it in her hand. That's correct. They had to give it to That's her. That's right. She didn't go out and buy it. She didn't find it. She didn't give her permission. That's right. Permission to have That's it. That's right. So of course it's the parents. But what the heck? The experts will tell you that two-year-olds should not be on any electronic. Of course, of course, uh, all day, mm-hmm. and it's going to affect them mentally and physically, and eyesight, their eyesight, and all kinds of things. Their I growth agree. and development. So what? How do you, you know? Get, 
through to people to help them understand. Like you but, said, you said technology is not a bad thing. It's a, it was, someone said it's a wonderful thing, mm-hmm. right? But a gun, uh, you right. put a, you put a gun <laughs> right. in, in a person's hand. You know, right. uh, <laughs> I was military too. You, mm-hmm. you was also, and I, mm-hmm. um, um, uh, the uh, I was married before. Uh, she passed. God bless her soul. I took her to the range. Mm-hmm. She shot all over the place. Right, she right. was dangerous, mm-hmm. you know. And I was trying to show her how to shoot, you know, the gun, a mm-hmm. gun. Mm-hmm. And um, well, it, it was just in God's. <laughs> mm-hmm. It was God's way. Not saying, hey, you know, you just leave that alone, but. She was dangerous Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know Not just saying It was a female It's anybody Mm -hmm. Right So you're saying When a mother does that It's it's not about the kid I don't think it's it's, about the kid It's it's about the parent Yeah She's making it convenient For her to shop With this kid I don't have to worry about her I don't have to listen to her But you know what You got a good point there But I see it in motion With my grandson now Uh, I'll see him in the car Doing the same thing With the phone or whatever But many times I'll have to call my daughter Mm -hmm. To check on her Make sure she's okay Because that's the way I roll right Mm -hmm. And she's letting me know Down the road That oftentimes She has to fight him For her phone So the other day I called her Mm -hmm. And I said You know because You know did her taxes She did her taxes And it's about time For her money to come in Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying And I was watching television And there's some scams going on I like Mm -hmm. to bring her Into the new scams coming on Mm -hmm. So that she'll be watching out for it, okay? So she was like, okay, she didn't answer the phone immediately, but she called me back and said, Dad, she said he had my phone. I almost had to choke him out to get my phone back. And so I said, put him on the phone. And when I talked to him, I said, you know what was wrong with you? He's like, no, no, I was just doing something. And this whole thing kept going back to I was doing something. And I said, let me tell you something. I said, when it's your mother's phone and you look down and see I'm calling or your grandmother's calling, one that's just calling and say, have a great day, is to check on you guys and it could be emergency or whatever. So you see something like that. Your mother's phone is her phone. You immediately stop what you're doing and give her her phone back. And if you got a problem with that, I said, I'll come through this phone and me and you would deal with that. Right. But I'm just saying it's just a situation to where now these kids are so reliant on it to where they are going into withdrawals when they don't have it yes, and they're acting drug. out and tripping so yeah. she, sometimes she said dad I'd rather just let him have the phone than hear from mm-hmm. him yeah, so see, that, yeah that there again <laughs> yes yeah, okay there mm-hmm. again goes into our uh, parents again mm-hmm. but sometimes you got to look at it uh, just giving the benefit of the doubt to say for example just the parents that the mothers that just don't have time for it mm-hmm. you know, their patience is short you mm-hmm. know what I mean because you know the parents could have a bad day you know she's working all day long with kids bad Bad kids mm-hmm. as a teacher, and so she's coming down and going through this little situation here. Yet in the long run, she's going to win this battle with him if she even has to call me. Right. And I got to get on the phone. She's going to win the battle. Well, she's going to win the war. Asking for help, so right? But I I'm mean, just saying she has she has her father. But we don't always. But they don't always have That's that. Correct. So th- what do you do? So what do you think he would do well, if she said no? You cannot have my he's gonna phone. He's going to throw a Let fit me, and trip. And. Yeah, but I'm just a saying. Fit never killed anybody. No, but if you're in the store or something like that, then no, no, you're no, caught you, up. No, you don't have to do it in the store. Because from the shoe, I've been and choked him out. Right. <laughs> then, then, you're, then you're into some situation. No, it becomes the rule of the house that yeah. you don't play with the phone. They can't play with my computer. Right. You know what I tell them? I work from home. I have a home-based office. When mm-hmm. they come, can I use your computer? No. Right. I work with my computer. Mm-hmm. Can I use your... No, I work with my... No. Right. Mm-hmm. No. But, on the other hand, I'm older. Mm-hmm. I've raised two daughters. Right. I'm not going to say I did everything perfect. I didn't have to well, deal with what no they're doing, what all, they're doing yes. now. But with my grandchildren, mm-hmm. I distract them. I will take them to uh, McDonald's mm-hmm. and let them play. Right. Then we'll have burgers and ice cream mm-hmm. or something. Mm-hmm. Or I'll take them to Chuck E. Cheese. Or mm-hmm. I'll take them somewhere else outside of that. Mm-hmm. But if I say no, it's no. They can, unless they try to, you know. Mm-hmm. Bogart, right. Not oh, Bogart. Yeah. They'd have to whoop yeah. me. They'd right. have to well, take it. Right, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're not going to do that because I got an enforcer in the house. Right, I got you. Right. <laughs> but he's softer than I am. Right. Oh, and, I, he's, and he's a techie. He's the he's responsible for all well, the technology. Exactly. That's what I was getting ready to say. Yeah. 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 I'm yeah. a techie. Yeah. 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 He's a yeah. techie. I'm a techie tech tech tech. too. But, right. I, you know, I have my, I raised my three oldest sons by myself. So, I mean, I was constantly running mm-hmm. and uh, really just didn't have no time for 
myself, but I always made time for myself, you know, basically when they were sleeping, this and that and the other. But um, it's a it's a 20, 24-7 uh, uh, job. Yeah. Um, those children didn't ask to come. Right. So once they're here, that's our responsibility or the parents' responsibility. But but we can talk about that all day. Mm -hmm. But there's the, the, what we're trying to get to is what can we do? What is the solution? How can we, you know, help somebody uh, that's going on through these things? You know, we can have stories all day long, but it still goes back to the parent. Thank you. And if they're in the house, they have to be some rules going on. Now, the extreme things that we're seeing um, is because parents and gave up or they're doing the same thing. So the child is going to do exactly what they see their parents is doing the at that point. It's the easiest thing for them to do. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and, and then, you know, we do the millennial journal show. So mm -hmm. we talk to a lot of millennials mm -hmm. and what they call Gen X. Mm -hmm. There's a generation of parents that do not want their kids to be unhappy. They do not want them to feel pain. Yeah, they're making they friends with them. They do not want them. to feel, they, they don't want them to be unhappy. My parents was like, oh, you're unhappy, go to your room and be unhappy when you're not unhappy anymore come on back oh, that, yeah. don't, that doesn't mean they didn't love me right they set some ground rules that that you can't cross the these are the ground rules i'll give a little here give a little there but i'm not giving here mm -hmm. and i think what they don't understand is what they're creating and what they're doing to their children mm -hmm. because you're going to have a generation of children mm -hmm. that can't that don't communicate well mm -hmm. they're going to be online mm -hmm. and like um, D pointed out at the beginning they're doing they're doing and saying things online they would never do of course if they weren't online mm -hmm. so so the parents are going to have to engage they're going to have to engage yeah, I, their children I totally agree um, outside of the, the internet right 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 you seen the commercial where the little boy is in the next room and he called his grandmother Right, he mm -hmm. said, "Grandmother, bring me another drink." And she looks at right. the phone. Oh, She's I haven't a seen that one yet. Oh, you should see that commercial. <laughs> I would have been like, he's, "What?" He's in there on the computer, and obviously, she bought him a drink uh -huh. once. And he mm -hmm. picks up the phone, and she's in the next room. He's in the next room, and mm -hmm. he calls her and asks her to bring him another drink. Mm -hmm. And she looks at that phone. She looks at the phone like, "What?" You know, she's in. How shock. about this, my mom? <laughs> I was at my mom's, and she called me from the other room. <laughs> I didn't pick up the phone. I got up and went to go see what she had to say. I'm not going to be doing all that one. But we yeah, can, hey, we come, on, to them. come in here. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, ma'am. Come turn the TV. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Turn the channel for me. What? We didn't have, we didn't have, remote. hey, we didn't have remotes then. We were the remotes. Look, look <laughs> what, what was in my mind, but it never came out of my oh, mouth. No. <laughs> no. So the kids rule. They're, yeah, they're well, setting the yes, rules. Yes, yes. Well, but like I don't you, think like parents said, understand the the damage that it can do in some areas. Well, they, they need to it. talk to the experts and they need to, to do some research and it needs to be bought out more, I think. Because what what I hear is this. They're using computers at school and they seem like they're doing better. Yes, they have a purpose and for a period of time, mm -hmm. they're learning. Mm -hmm. And it, it, there is a purpose behind what they're doing at school. And then they have recess. Mm -hmm. And then they have lunch. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then they do other things. Mm -hmm. And it's all guided. And, and there's a certain amount of time they spend doing it. Mm -hmm. And that could work the same way at home, but it doesn't. Mm -hmm. Well, here's the thing I wanted to, I wanted to point out is that okay yes now we know it's on the table we know parents have to get involved mm -hmm. and then we have the other parents uh the millennials that uh do the same thing that the children is doing mm -hmm. right okay mm -hmm. so and here's here's one of the biggest things that we all um hit is this when we go over there to say something about what they're doing they get very offensive mm -hmm. and they want to fight they want to cut you out they want to do all these things right mm -hmm. and so what we do we sit back and we draw back but we don't engage see when those things happen if you cannot compose yourself because this person is calling you out of your name this and that and the other if you can get your emotions under control, leave the situation, 
Find another way of a plan. Don't give up. Find another way to approach to get your point across or that wisdom across to say, hey, reason why, you know, uh, just throw a name out there, uh, Kashan or whatever, is acting this way is because of this. I feel we as the, the wisdom should step up a little bit more. And, and, and stop being afraid of the, um, the, the, the contact that we have. But once again, like you said, it goes back, it goes back. Because to we'll, we'll go back and we will be like, oh, man, you know, I'm not going to mess with that. Okay, that's a, you know, we got too many of, 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 of older folks saying, no, okay, well, you know, but I understand if they continue, you you know, there's nothing you can do about it. Then you pray on it and, but and it you goes, can see. Okay, but what we're talking about, it's going deeper than that, though, okay? Yeah. Because it's got the good, but it's got the bad. Like right. I said, let's go back to the reality of it. The bullying is one of the greatest things that's being done now. And you got grown folks. Folks bullying yeah, each other yeah, too yes. on Twitter. One of the, yes. the highest in the land is doing the same doggone yes. thing. Okay, tweeting craziness. Okay, right. so if it's coming from the top down, okay, then we can talk all day long about what it is and how it is. But it's damaging. I agree. And these kids are seeing it and they're getting away with it. And their parents are doing it and they're getting away with it because they're bullying on the phone too and talking about each other on this internet canary mm -hmm. to um, to media too. But then let's go a little deeper because there's all aspects of the media now okay mm -hmm. now let's f visual the visual part of it now there are music videos coming out today that I wouldn't have watched in my wildest oh, wow. days yes. you know what I'm saying that are teaching our kids different behaviors mm -hmm. and different learning mechanisms out there and it's not the parents that are allowing it in their household they're not seeing it there they're seeing it from being in school and watching some of the videos that they're seeing with their kids on the phones with yes. their uh, peers or whatever yeah. else and they're bringing these weird acquired assessments and visuals inside of the home. Mm -hmm. So now if a parent, like I get once again, it's the, the parents' fault. Yeah, what's it? Parents fault. So if they're astute or they're not astute of what these kids are seeing, they can't often uh, guard their friends. Right. Because they don't see them at school and church right, or whatever. Right. But once they see a behavior that crops up that's not familiar to what they're used to seeing and doing in the household and they didn't bring it to the kids, mm -hmm. then that should be a red flag for them to start checking the kids and finding out how they're getting this, I where they get it. Where'd you hear that? Where'd you see that? So if my, my grandson starts cursing or whatever, who'd you hear say that? That's the first thing we right, do. Right. Where'd you see that or whatever? Right. And then a lot of times they hem and haul because they don't want to snitch or whatever else. But you're trying to, you're only asking because you want to find out where the root is. Mm -hmm. Whether it's in the teachers there in school that's doing this behavior. Mm -hmm. and sometimes kids act out. So there's a lot, and, and Linda, you especially being a, 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 a life coach and dealing with different psychological aspects with kids and and being in that world too then I know you see a lot of times where kids act out stuff and you're able to recognize that acting out is something else yeah, you know what I'm saying one of the biggest challenges I see honestly D mm -hmm. is that people who are raising children mm -hmm. think they start to raise a teenager when a teenager is a teenager uh, we talked about a, a single woman raising a man in the last show mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if a, if you're raising a child mm -hmm. to be an adult you start raising that child to be an adult while they are still a child true right, they, true, right. They, but like, oh well he's I'll get, you know and they if if, if he's 10 mm -hmm. and you think I'm going to start pouring into him oh, at no. 10 no no but mm -hmm. I'm telling you there are people yeah. out there that's no, their, I, I I know yeah, I'm agreeing and, and, with okay you. so mm -hmm. here I have a t uh, I have someone coming up on a teenager teenager and all of of a sudden, I'm going to start giving these rules and regulations. Oh, they're not trying to hear and it. Poor. They're not trying to hear right. it. They're not trying to so hear it. So what, what they, I think I asked a question that last time, the difference between a, a, a female and a male that's born a baby, the difference is they're both babies, and we talked about genetics and all of that. Right. Mm -hmm. But the difference is how they're treated from birth. Mm -hmm. There's a lot that goes on to mm -hmm. how they're going to treat a female, how they're mm -hmm. going to treat a male, right. and it starts at birth. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's the same with kids. They have to start pouring into those children. So they, they're not going to notice any difference if they are not pouring into mm -hmm. them at, at that. And so when things start to go awry, it's only after there's something horrible mm -hmm. happens mm -hmm. that most yeah. 
right. <gasps> Not my child. Right. You know. Oh, yes. So, so mm-hmm. if you want to raise a wo- a girl to be a woman or a man a, a, or a boy to be a man, it starts at birth all the way up. There are certain things you have to do all along the way, and parents totally just don't seem that. to get that. And one of the things well, monitoring, when I was in college, monitoring, yeah, monitoring you got to monitor was, because, like yeah. I said, if you're seeing something a behavior that's not familiar to what you trained him to do, or whatever, it's coming but from the outside of influence. Have to be tra- teaching them, I, I right, but if you teach them right, I, I kind of don't use training because what tra- teach them, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but if you're teaching them one way, and I'm telling you, the peer pressure is a monster. We've been oh, through it, oh, so now, I mean, yeah, if we, we tell them, that. no, if yeah. you see this one here and you know it's wrong, walk away or whatever, mm-hmm. and then these kids in school saying, look here, we're not even going to be afraid. We're going to jump on you in case you do it. Then that's a whole different world right. to be in his world right. and going through his mind or right. her mind at the time is happening. And, right. And, you know? and some of that's going to happen. Yeah. But for a parent to think that they only have to start I don't have to worry until they're not teenagers yet. It doesn't oh, matter no, what no, they no. watch. It that's doesn't irresponsible matter what they do. It right doesn't matter no, what they that's see. That's a proven fact. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 and that now that at, at single mindedly blows my mind. Yeah, that's a responsible yeah, behavior. She, she's still she's only six. No. It doesn't matter. No. It matters. Well, <laughs> reason why, you, and, and that's a great point. I'm totally in uh, agreement with with both of y'all. You know, um, it does start. I know when I was in college, you know. Uh, you know, stu- study of psychology. I mean, you, you. These are things that you run uh, run across. You learn that. See, a child starts to form his personality uh, back then, around what seven, he, eight years well, actually, old. Actually, by the time they're uh, you know, about, yeah, you know, well, I'm <laughs> just saying, you know, seven, eight, because we, you know, that's what they said. But now. Mm-hmm. Certainly. What you say around about three now, yeah. things are sped up. So, right, right. It, I mean, if you, it blows my mind when I see a little child because I mean, what, what you know, it, it well, just let's blows get, me let's away. Get, let's get a little deeper into it, into the personality and as far as influence or whatever. Uh, they did a study and we talked about it way back in the time when we were doing Women of Promise way back in the day. And we were talking about it because it's there to help young girls as an example to the women that have made it. And so the average age, this was years ago, the average age of a young lady a young girl having sex okay at the time when they find they probably sat on a study for a long time was uh, 12 years old really yeah and that was years ago and I remember wow. that when they, when they brought that out now what's the average age now you know what I'm saying? So does that scare you? Then that was there, okay? Now they're they're getting Are into. You sure it was twelve. It was it was it was, it was between twelve and fourteen. Well, not even twenty years ago, but it was like uh, within the last. I think it was the study was like five years. Oh, last five okay. years last is five what it is. Years. So I mean, that's five years. And at the training <laughs> and whatever else that they're giving these kids now into yeah. how to use the internet, how to do the YouTubes, and well, how to it was do the videos that was look at the, the videos out the YouTube videos that these young girls are doing out there now that are young girls that are doing certain things on video or YouTube and some of it's making it through YouTube and some of it's not. You know what I'm saying? But I'm just saying and then you're just like, okay, what's going on when you can have these kids under age getting there and being able to have a YouTube channel? Something's wrong with that. Because if they're trying to be promiscuous or that, then they're out there putting what they're doing and they've got the forum to do it on a platform or that can be seen by their... everybody. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And that opens up another can of worms. Right. You know what I'm saying? When yeah. you do that. Right. So, we you know, we kind of well, hit on it a little bit last time when we talked about uh, single, lots of uh, homes are single right. moms and can a mom raise a man. But having worked with uh, teen pregnancy programs throughout mm. the state of California and mm. more intently in the city of Inglewood. Right. I hate to say this, men, but it was always little girls and old men. Uh, yeah, that's yeah, true. Yeah, it was yeah, always well, little girls, yeah. 12, 14, 16 year old right. girls Stalkers. were having babies. Right. Right. Stalkers. Right. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, those are stockers. But, but, right but you know what? No, but, but no, but yeah. there, that, that tells you that there was something missing, that there right. was a problem oh. there. Right. And that a, 14, a, a 12, 14 year old girl. Mm-hmm. Getting pregnant by a forty-year-old man oh, right. or a twenty-five-year-old man. man or a thirty-year-old man, there had to be a problem there. That's a now, child exactly yeah. what that's what that's yeah. what's legally that's called. But, up, no, yeah. that's straight but, up. No, child but it was it was it was very seldom right. that we had a fourteen-year-old pregnant by a fourteen-year-old boy. Right. Or, exactly. Or a 14, 16 year old girl pregnant right. by a sixteen-year-old boy. It, exactly. it just wasn't. It didn't exactly. exist. Exactly. It was always grown men. So we had to say there's a problem here mm-hmm. and what's major the problem, problem. and of right. course most of them were, were single mom households mm-hmm. but that's not the basic problem the problem was that they were not being 
taught that there was something missing there because the father or a male figure wasn't there and here comes someone paying them some attention. Right, that's exactly correct. And that's right. what happened. Right. That's exactly right. correct. Right. So when, when we that's see, why I when said we that's see a, a problem, we have to look at that problem and start yeah. working backwards. Mm-hmm. Because where it came from. Yeah, see where, right, the, where right. that where yes. the problem. Yes. And, and education was what we dealt with. That's true. To that's what you got to do. Yes. Because when you had a 14-year-old pregnant girl, you had a 28-year-old mother. Right. And she didn't know where her life was going. Right, right, You know, right, it yeah. wasn't like Wisdom. Yeah. Well, they used to say the babies no raising wisdom. babies. Yeah, the, <laughs> yeah, with babies raising babies Truly raising babies. babies. The, the, raising that's babies. the new curse. But like I said, you know what I'm saying? This is still happening today with some of these old school players out there with these young girls. I mean, it's they not might as not be. Bad as it used to be. Because no, of a no. Lot of the programs that came exactly. Along. That's yeah. the awareness. See, we've got to mm-hmm. see. We got to start programs. making a lot more awareness. They're now, predators you know, and you, you, they're predators. But they're gonna. You're gonna have them little dudes. You're gonna have them with you always. Yeah. Okay. You got one today that they're getting ready to find out a way to get him in Illinois right now uh-huh. and uh, because his music may be prolific and everybody's doing his music Come he on. got away with it for a long time because like I said money talks yeah, and when, they, when you're throwing money at the Jay, situation yes. then them folks are going to get behind their money because you ain't going to mess with their money but let that money start going down then you're open game oh. so now it's this time now for you to pay the piper uh-huh. and that's what you're going to do but I'm just saying it's going to happen all day until we start addressing the issue and the issue is how can we get programs together to give these oh, they're, girls they're more they're wonderful. You know, they, they, if you look at the statistics right. today it is nowhere near where it was right at, yeah I'm it, sure it, it, nowhere yeah. near yeah so technology has programs something to do with that there. too and everybody got cameras now and that's, yeah yeah and I wanted I, that's what I wanted to tell if you're out there listening and you you planning on doing something you might as well just do it the right way <laughs> Because cameras are everywhere. Right. They're going to get okay? you. They're going to get you. No matter right, what you that's do. That's it. They're going to get you. Now, um, we, what I want to start doing too, Linda, for, in the government and, and uh, box, yeah. is uh, uh, being able to give resources, online resources, where to go. I know that uh, when Makita came through one time, she gave a, um, she gave an email address or a website. Mm-hmm. It was called Aunt Bertha. And I went into that Aunt Bertha, and it's nationwide. There's services, whether it be uh, uh, for young girls looking for uh, shelter, housing, or uh, help on raising kids. It's just a really a good website. So that's one that I have, and I'd really want to get a list of them and start bringing me in and just make them available. So that one is Aunt Bertha, B-E-R-T-H-A, Aunt, A-U-N-T, Aunt Bertha, is a good one there, too. So uh, what we'll be able to do, we're we'll about to close this out, and it's a great conversation. So I want to do this since we're talking talking uh, ladies and gentlemen to some experts here then uh, Linda if you could just you know tell them how to catch up with you and what you do and how they how it relates to synergy we're putting the synergy together now um, yeah the best way is uh, to email me and mm-hmm. that's Linda my name L-I-N-D-A speaks S-P-E-A-K-S at A-O-L dot com and if you're interested in any of the services I provide or if you're interested in working with me in any capacity, please go to my website. It's www.businessdevelopmentforsuccess.com. That's businessdevelopmentforsuccess.com. Okay, I appreciate that. Now, let's switch reels over here. And, uh, Troy, why don't you give them where they can and let us see the synergy in that one, what you do, too. Oh, okay. Um, email me at boxx09 at gmail.com. Okay? And um, I will go out and search and look for you. I will pray and I will lift you up and I will go find the information for you. Amen. Okay, but also for those that, as he's talking, for those that are also into the music industry, as we, he's talking about the personal aspect of it too, but also as the music, if there's some young musicians out there that are, oh, yeah, call you know, wanting to get into the music game or figure out what to do and how to, you know, saying, circumvent this world, then go ahead. Yeah, as a matter of fact, mm-hmm. um, my group, Funkalicious, right, right. Uh, we're looking for a uh, permanent keyboard player. Okay. Uh, um, don't contact me if you you're not serious about this. Um, we in the studio right now. We work on on a single that we're about to put out, and um, I'll give it to you again. It's B O B O. I know I talk kind of fast, but B O 
XX 09 at gmail.com I, I, I wanted to say something that real quick go ahead, go ahead. Um, remember you said that um, you know you would have you have to sit down uh, and 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 talk to your child uh, if you see a strange behavior say hey where is this coming from mm -hmm. or this and any other right. I want to tell everybody um, uh, uh, what D nice said works um, uh, real quick my mom used to do that give me one day during the week one day just to say what was on my mind what I was thinking however and how it came out she gave me that one day I mean I cussed I did everything but after that one day I had to shut that down but she knew where I was coming from and she was able to help me mm -hmm. and guide me to where I needed to go and that was my mother mothers out there fathers single mothers and fathers try that Mm -hmm. I like that Now Linda So now you got Your final thoughts now Give us about a minute To give your final thoughts Wrap something up around I was raised in a very Old fashioned household My dad was a Southern Baptist minister I don't know what it is About the Southern Baptist ministers That make it But he, it was very strict uh, Upbringing And I Actually my mom and dad Has Apologize later on for being so strict mm -hmm. but he had four daughters and he had one son and he was really strict on us but they taught morals values yes. and the one thing that he taught us is to respect our mother we mm -hmm. could not in any way Ooh, disrespect yes. her right. and you know girls we kind of would go at our mom but he would right, not right, allow right. that and after he passed away we moved mom out here and we took care of her until she passed away this past October because he told he taught us to respect our mother so I think you have to teach children mm -hmm. in the house it, is, it doesn't mean that they're always going to do it mm -hmm. we snuck around and did our little stuff yes, but you know but, yes. but that respect was there mm -hmm. um, so I think you have to teach your children how you want them to behave. The Bible says you teach them in the way you want them to go. And that's how you have to also you have to teach don't spare them. the rod either. So yeah. right, well, don't be afraid to whip them. But I, but I appreciate I appreciate that uh, fun <laughs> thoughts. <laughs> yeah. So you know what we had. Okay, a, but we can put a we can put a psychological <laughs> whooping on them. Right. That's true. Well, we had a good, we good we had a, we had a we had a good time today, ladies and gentlemen. I uh, thank you for joining us today on the uh, Gospel Jazz Connection. And like I was telling you before, if you're trying to find some answers, you know what I'm saying. You tuned in the right spot because we try to give you uh, several you know when the panel is here we try to give you just a varied amount of views and you've got to make your own choices because you've got to live your own life you got to raise your own kids you know what I'm saying the sad person is somebody who's letting somebody else raise their kid and then they got problems with the way they're being raised if you don't like the way somebody else is raising your kid raise your own kid and if you got a problem with how you raise your kid then get some knowledge based on how to become better at that you know so it, it, you just know clear answer on anything that we do here but we give you some viable solutions each and every week on the gospel jazz connection we just sit back and uh, we just chop it up and that's what we do and i enjoy having the panels here and once again a shout out to carrie who's doing his thing and uh, getting ready for his weekend um of job and so all the best for that one there and you guys that are just listening to us this is what we do each and every week on the gospel jazz connection you can reach out to us and give us ideas on what you'd like to see us talk about or if you want to visit the shore or call in then we'll be glad to do that just give us a hookup at gospel jazz connection at yahoo.com that's spelled out g-o-s-p-e-l jazz j-a-z-z connection c-o-n-n-e-c-t-i-o-n -E at yahoo.com and we'll be glad to just take any um, of your suggestions and find out if there's questions you need as answered and just, you know, get it to us because that's what we do each and every week here at the Gospel Jazz Connection. And then we have our smooth jazz where we play behind it, you know, because we know that uh, no matter what you're going through, music always soothes a savage beast. So that's always a way to just sit back and relax and get some knowledge at the same time. And we do that each and every week here at the Gospel Jazz Connection. And like I said, once I say 
each and every one I'd like to thank once again um, Linda coming in thank you for showing up and showing out uh, Troy we yes, appreciate sir. you guys we look forward again to do this again next week and Carrie will be back with us for Ms. M for Troy for Linda for Ms. M Monica Alexander yeah, stay stay up on what you're doing and CC the other ones that have been a part of the team Lady um, Lady D uh, she's going to be back with us, you know what I'm saying? She's been kind of like under the weather right now, but she's all good, you know what I'm saying? So Lady D from Consulting Entertainment is going to be back uh, with us soon, giving us all the information on what's happening in the entertainment world. Miss Dorian Edwards, Lady D, get well soon. And like I say, each and every week, just be nice, saying put God first and everything else will follow. I guarantee it.